Hey friends! In today's video I'll be making some op art with Inkscape. Here are some examples I made the other day. I wish I could say these first two were based on pictures of me playing these sports, but unfortunately I'm not that athletic anymore. And the Statue of Liberty has a cool yellow glow, which I'll be showing you how to make later on. So what exactly is op art? It's been around for a while, and it's short for optical art. Basically, it's a style of abstract art. It uses various techniques to create optical illusions. And these illusions show movement, hidden images, or flashing patterns. Here's the starting point for our project today. This is the great Robert Plant and Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, taken from a concert probably in the early 1970s. One of their most iconic songs is Stairway to Heaven, so this project will be a tribute to that. And here's the final result we'll be working towards. In this project, we'll be making use of quite a few tools within Inkscape. We'll use the pen tool, which is used in many projects. We'll follow that up with the node tool. And then we'll use the shape builder. We're also going to use the pages tool. Stitch subpaths is one of the path effects. And to save a lot of time, we'll be using keyboard shortcuts. Another time saver is going to be select same. And finally, we'll use the text tool. Okay, let's jump into Inkscape to get started. I'll right click and look at the document properties I'm using for this project. My starting page size is 8 by 8 inches. I'm making my page color yellow, and you'll see why I'm doing this later on in the project. Okay, here's our starting photo. The first tool we'll use is the pen tool. I'll start by drawing a temporary line segment off to the left. I'd like the stroke color to be red, so I'll go down to the bottom, hold the shift key, and click on the red swatch. Then I'll go over to the fill in stroke menu and check on my stroke style to make sure the width is one pixel. Okay, I'll change to the selection tool, get rid of that temporary line, and go back into the pen tool. My objective now is to make a silhouette of our two musicians. I'll start at the right bottom of Jimmy Page's leg, move over to the left, and holding down the control key, I can make a straight line to the left edge of Robert Plant's leg. Now I'll just make a series of line segments to give me a rough outline of the two musicians. While I'm in hyperspeed mode here, what I'm actually doing is clicking wherever I see a curve begin and where the end of the curve is, and then I'll come back later and make those curves. I do have to say I'm a little bit jealous of all this hair. Okay, to finish off this shape, I need to come back and connect the last point with the beginning point of our lines. I'll zoom to the selection so we can see what we've got. I really just want the red outline without the black fill color, so I'll come down and click on the red X at the bottom. Okay, now it's time to grab the node tool to make our curves. When you hover the cursor over one of the line segments, you'll see this little four-headed arrow icon to let you know that you can grab the line and make a curve out of it. Okay, I'm back into hyperspeed mode, and when we get up to the tambourine, you can see that if we want to manipulate the curves a little bit more, we have these handles that we can use. If you don't see them, you can click on a node to make them available. Okay, now there are some gaps between the two musicians that we do not want to be part of the silhouette. So we'll go back to the pen tool and we'll start tracing these out. For the bottom gap, I want to make sure that there's a little bit of overlap with the bottom straight line to help out the shape builder tool later. So again, it's using a combination of the pen tool followed up by the node tool to complete the curves. Okay, we've got our outline and our gaps all traced out, so now let's select them all. And it's time to use the Shape Builder tool. Make sure that you have the plus icon selected at the top, 
because we want to select the shape we want to keep. So now if we select somewhere in the middle, this is exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and click on Finish. So now to see the silhouette more clearly, let's go down and click on the red swatch to give it a red fill color. Great, okay, let's go ahead and align this silhouette to the page by going to the Align and Distribute menu and making sure we have Relative to selected as Page, and we can align it vertically and horizontally to the middle. Now it is too big, so we can hold down the Shift and Control key and grab a corner and resize it to fit inside the page. Now I'll zoom to the page so we can see things more clearly. Okay, now we can use our Pages tool, which is kind of hiding here on the left near the bottom of all the icons. This lets me grab the corners of the page so I can resize it to just give it a little bit of a margin outside of our silhouette. Great. I'll go back to the selection tool and I want to align the silhouette one more time to the center of the page. Now I'm going to use Control D to make a duplicate of the silhouette and drag it off to the left. We'll need this later to create the drop shadow. Okay, now it's time to make our horizontal lines. So I'll use the pen tool and turn snapping on. I will snap to the top left of the page and the bottom left to make a line segment. I'll go down to the bottom and hold down the shift key to make the stroke black for the segment. And we're done with snapping and we're done with the pen tool. I'll use control D now to make a duplicate of the line segment and align that one to the right side of the page. And I want both segments to be treated as one, so I'll make sure they're both selected and then go into Path, Combine. Okay, now it's time to use our path effects. So let's go into Path, and at the bottom, choose Path Effects. Now in the Path Effects menu on the right, we can click the drop-down box and go over and select Stitch Subpaths. So you can see it draws these horizontal lines between our two vertical lines, and the default number of those is five lines. We want a lot more than that, and so I'll choose something like 50 lines. Okay, to lock that in, we can choose Path, Object to Path, and you can see that gets rid of the Path Effect settings on the right. Okay, we're done with the Path Effect, so I'll get rid of that tab and make a little more space. Now with the Path Effect, we did lose our two vertical lines on the page, so I want to recreate those using the Pen tool and snapping again. This time, however, to help the Shape Builder tool that I'll use in a moment, I'm going to use the Nodes tool to extend the line segments down and up a little bit, and then I'll move it over to the right by using a couple of clicks of the right arrow. So now I can use Control D again to duplicate this, align it to the right side of the page, and move that slightly over to the left. Good, okay, now let's select everything again and go back into the Shape Builder tool. Okay, now I wanna select every single shape that appears in here and leave no shape behind. This will require some zooming in to make sure nothing is left behind. And if I do miss something later on, I'll see some of the yellow page poking through. Okay, that looks pretty good, so let's click on Finish. I'll go down to the bottom and hold down the Shift key and use the black swatch to give us our black stroke again. Okay, now what I want to do is make alternating black lines for the lines that are outside of the silhouette. I'll start by selecting the top line. Then I'll use D on the keyboard to select the dropper tool, and I'll come down and make the color black. So that changes the line to black. Then I can use S on the keyboard to go back to the selection tool. Now I'll select the next alternating line. I'll use D again on the keyboard to change to the dropper tool and click on the line to turn it black. Before I move away from that line, I will use S on the keyboard to switch back to the selection tool. Now it's just a sequence of using these keyboard shortcuts and clicking on the lines to get the alternating black lines. As I'm going into hyperspeed here, I'll put the sequence of clicks that you need to use up here on the screen.
Okay, that looks good. Now we want to do the same thing for the lines inside the silhouette, but we want the black lines to be alternating with the black lines that are on the outside of the silhouette. This can get pretty tricky when you have small shapes. You might have to really zoom in or maybe even hold down the Alt key to select the smallest of the shapes. Okay, good. We don't really want the black stroke anymore, so let's select everything and go down and hold the Shift key and click on the red X to get rid of that. Okay, as I zoom in a little bit, there are some yellow spots that I see with the page showing through, which means I missed those shapes with the Shape Builder tool. That's not a big deal. I'll just make a rectangle that covers the shape that I missed, give it the proper color, and then drop it to the lowest level so that it takes care of the issue. It's kind of like when you have a hole in your pair of jeans and you put a patch on the inside of the jeans to cover it up. Okay, I think we're looking good. Now let me show you a very quick way to change all the red lines to white. I want to use the selection tool to click on something that's red, so I'll slide over and do that on our spare silhouette. Now I want to select everything that's red in this project. So I go up to Edit and choose Select Same Fill Color. Nice, so everything that's red has been selected, and I can use Shift and select the spare silhouette so that I don't do anything with that. So basically that one is now unselected. Okay, so now all I have to do is go down to the bottom and change the fill color of everything that's selected to white. Cool. Okay, now let's work on a drop shadow effect. I will select our spare silhouette and go into Filters, Shadows and Glows, and click on Drop Shadow. Here are the settings we can use, and let's click on Live Preview to see what it looks like. The filter remembers what I left it at, and this is how I want it to end up. But let's take a look at these settings. I want the shadow to be black, so I can go over to the Blur Color and make sure it's black by sliding the L slider for lightness all the way to the left. And then you can see the RGB code is all zeros. And then we can play with the blur radius and horizontal and vertical offset settings to see how these work. My final choices are a blur radius of 3 and offset values of 1. When we're happy, we can click Apply and Close. So now I'm going to use Filter Remove Filters because I want to position this where it needs to be before I actually apply the filter again. Like I did earlier, I can align the silhouette to the page vertically and horizontally to the center. Great, now I can apply the drop shadow filter again, and because it remembered the values I used last time, I can just apply and close. I think that's a pretty cool effect. Now the last touch is to add some text to our project. So let's go and use the text tool. I'll use part of the second line of the lyrics where he says, and she's buying a stairway. Now, if you've ever seen the liner notes for this particular album, you know that they had kind of a mystical font. And I couldn't find that one digitally, but I did find something that was close. So to see all of the text attributes, we'll use the T icon at the top. The font that I found online and installed is called GL Stella Mystica. So I'll choose that and click on Apply. By the way, you can install fonts when you're outside of Inkscape, and then when you open Inkscape back up, they should appear in the list. Okay, now I would like to add a white outline to this line, so I will duplicate this line of text and drag it down a bit. Then I'll change the font to white, and also use the Shift key and click on white to give it a white stroke. Then I'll go over to the Fill and Stroke menu, and in the Stroke Style, I'll give it a pretty wide stroke width, let's say 20 pixels. I will drop that to the lower level. So now when I use the alignment tool to align it to the text, it will be underneath. One thing I don't like so much is how jagged the stroke is, and I can correct that by selecting it again, going over to the stroke style, 
and changing the join and cap settings to their rounded versions. Yeah, that's much better. So now I'll group these two things together. And finally, it's just a matter of positioning the text where it looks the best in the rest of the project. I think the white outline here is a little bit too big, and if you look what I did for the thumbnail, I didn't use quite as big an outline, so we can certainly change that offline. Now we can also give this a drop shadow, so we can use Control D to duplicate what we have here, and then apply the same drop shadow filter. At this stage, I grouped everything together, and when I have it selected, you can see the dotted line outline is a little bit bigger than what we see visibly. So let's take care of that. With snapping turned on, I'm going to take the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle over the visible portion of our project. Okay, so now with the rectangle selected, I can use Shift and Alt to select the project below it. And you can see that by the oversized uh, dotted line outline that shows up. And now I can just use Object Clip Set Clip to get rid of the extraneous blur that we can't even really see. And the last thing I want to do to resize our page to match the project is to go into Edit and then use Resize Page to Selection. Okay, great, that's our final project. And I hope you found it instructive. So, what do you think of op art? You like it or not? I think it can be pretty cool if you start with the right silhouette. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.